When are we going to see the Nashville Shooters Manifesto? When? I don't know. Um, We actually don't know. And it's so bad at this point, the delay uh, in the release of information about the motive, which is said to be contained within the manifesto of the Nashville shooter, Audrey Hale, who claimed to be transgender uh, when she fired upon multiple people at a Christian school in Nashville, killing six, three of them kids. Um, we're not supposed to, you know, be able to have access to that information. I guess it's just too dangerous. You know, it's really strange that it seems like there is a political motivation in hiding this manifesto, just like sometimes there is a political motivation in releasing a motive well before enough evidence has even been collected. I believe I believe we have seen uh, in the last mass public shooting. But anyway, Lucas Weber is standing by from Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty on behalf of our pal Matt Kittle who is with the Wisconsin Daily Star. Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty is now, what, required to actually sue. Is that what it's come to, Lucas? Uh, Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, Great to be with you. And yes, unfortunately, that is what it's come to. Uh, We filed a complaint today in federal court down in Tennessee uh, against the Federal Bureau of Investigation uh, seeking the release of these records. All right, so who controls the release? Because last week... I believe it was last week or at the end of the week before when Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty indicated it it was it would intend to sue if this were not for this information were not forthcoming. Um, we saw the Nashville police claim they were the ones that were going to be withholding the information. They were going to ready it for release, but they were going to withhold information. So who actually has control of the information? So it's our understanding that both the Nashville Police and the FBI have this information. Um, Further, my understanding that the the Nashville Police have have walked it back a little bit uh, now and are saying they're not going to be immediately releasing information uh, due to some other litigation that was filed in state court down there. Um, Our our freedom of information request that our plaintiffs, our our clients here made was with the FBI. Uh, The FBI is a federal law enforcement agency. They're subject to uh, to FOIA. Um, the Freedom of Information Act, which is the federal version of uh, our state kind of public records act. Um, you know, they don't get to pick and choose which records they have to turn over. Um, and, and in this case, we believe the records that were requested are of extreme public importance and that they're being wrongfully uh, withheld at this time, which is why we are now in court. All right. So the litigation in Tennessee, we're not quite sure, but presumably it's over the manifesto. Correct. Yes. So. I'm, I'm guessing the litigation in Tennessee in state court is about releasing the manifesto. So release the damn manifesto. Yeah, there's there's certainly a uh, a growing interest uh, in there, kind of a groundswell of people who are trying to to access this. I think you know whatever their motives are for withholding it, uh, it's only I think increasing uh, people's desire to want to see it. Um, as you know, we talked about previously, there are uh, policymakers all around the country who are trying to, and, and families, frankly, individuals everywhere, who are just trying to understand the motives of, of this heinous criminal and, and what could have led to this. And, you know, is there anything that we could do differently? Is there something that could be done? They're looking for solutions. And when government has that information and they just withhold it and they won't turn it over to anyone, um, it raises a lot of red flags. Yeah, it does. The, the information that is also not forthcoming, besides the manifesto, but it also there could be some, some insight into this information that is being deliberately withheld, is the toxicology on the killer. Um, you know, we, we don't get to get information that could give policymakers, that could give medical professionals, that could give we the people valuable information we could use to protect ourselves so i mean why hide what is the argument to hide any of this are they are they actually saying well it's an open investigation we're investigating a crime it's a crime scene it's an open investigation of course we know who killed who and who died but are they saying that exactly yeah that's that's what the fbi is citing too so under federal law federal agencies uh, in particular law enforcement agencies uh, are able to withhold records that could reasonably be expected to interfere with enforcement proceedings. So that's the exemption that they've cited to so far to our clients in terms of denying their record requests. Um, we don't know any more information beyond that. Uh, we, we certainly haven't heard anything. I think the fact that the Nashville Police originally said they were writing it for release um, and weren't talking about any kind of potential enforcement proceedings, 
you know, it just it raises more questions than answers. So well, you know that um, now the Nashville police seem, seemingly say, well, now there's a legal case, and so now we're not going to release it. That's an, I mean, it's 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 as if they they are manipulating the intention of uh, you know of a law that is meant to protect the integrity of an investigation. There is, I mean, what's the investigation? What is the investigation? And you can't excuse litigation as an investigation to hide a document that is subject to freedom of information or open records requests. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, we live in a free society. We have a free press. Um, We're proud to support uh, our free society and our free press. That's what this case is all about. Government doesn't get to decide what information uh, the people of this country should see and should get their hands on. You know, the people need to see everything. And I think we can all agree that in certain situations where there's a pending law enforcement case, you know, that could that could actually, you know, result in something. There there may be a need from time to time to to keep things quiet at least initially while they do their investigative work. I think everybody can understand that. That's not the case here. And they haven't given us any indication as to why that would be the case here. But as you said, or as I said earlier, that's that's what they're citing to in this for mm. withholding these records and, and we don't think that's appropriate and that's why we are now in court. All right. So timeline in terms of now that now that they have pushed this and this is the government for in but for Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty, who's not charging for this, you know, because you guys are a public interest law firm. Um, but but for you existing, who can afford to sue the FBI? Uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, that's that's part of the problem, right? I think um, in this case, you know, as you said, we're a public interest law firm. We don't charge our clients, but for many individuals out there who want to get records from government, they're simply unable to do so. Uh, because of the cost of litigation, and um, you know that's why it's more important than ever that government agencies take this stuff seriously and understand that they work for the people. So, timeline on this: Do you think you can turn this around quickly? Um, it seems like what they're trying to do is they're. I mean, in terms of motive, we're not even. We don't have a motive. That's what they say. We don't have a motive. Yes, you do have a motive. She wrote. And she and she drew pictures and she made social media posts and she talked to friends. We have something we can piece together and plausibly describe as a motive. But I mean, you're, you're talking about released motives on on crimes that happened three days ago. This thing is is now it's growing mold. This case is getting that old. And pretty soon, nobody will pay any attention to it. Just like if you don't talk about it long enough, nobody paid any attention to the fact that we still know nothing about Mandalay Bay. Exactly. And we're, we're hoping, uh, you know, there's no, I, I suppose, no exact timeline that we will know for sure what the answer would be. Um, you well, know, once you're ballpark. in litigation, there's a lot of variables. You know, it could be a month. It could be, could be more or less, uh, kind of depending on how quickly the government responds, and how quickly the the court is willing to uh, take up arguments on this. So is, all right, so um, a month. Um, No, it won't be a month. But could it be a year? Uh, I I would certainly hope not. Hopefully we get it much sooner than that. And I can say, you know, we'll do everything that we can to expedite this as quickly as possible for all the reasons that I already explained. You know, these are vital public records. Yeah, and, and it's that we need to get our hands on. Absolutely true. Judicial Watch sometimes ta- it, you know has litigated for years to try to get the government to turn over records it was supposed to be able to cough up immediately. And then when you get the records, much of it will probably be redacted. I'm just going to guess. I'm 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 spitballing here. Much of it will probably be redacted and you will have to go back and say unredact this. You know, that's you, certainly certainly possible. Yeah. Absolutely. Good yeah. to have you. Good to have you on the program. Thanks. I'm really glad that we have Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty um, or, you know, I mean, many people would not get justice. Thanks so much for joining me on the show. Thanks for having me, Vicki. Lucas Weber, Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty. They are a public interest law firm. They accept donations. They are tax deductible. If you go to will-law.org um, and you like the work they do, please consider making a donation. We'll be right back.